you visited Belize and you can see yourself settling here, but not sure how it's going to feel like. Well, in this video, I speak to a wonderful Canadian woman who, for the love of humanity and, of course, her hardworking Belizean husband, decided to move to Belize. Did Belize live up to her expectation? Belize is home to me now. This guy swept me off my feet, brought me here. Well, we find out. They are the unbelievable Perezes, and this is their story. My name is Mickey. Keep watching. For a young lady to move from her country to follow a, a foreigner, right? Belize. Belize isn't, wasn't in the map. When he told me that he was from Belize, which I'd never heard of before, I actually had to look it up on Google just to make sure he was telling the truth and this wasn't a fictional place. <laughs> My name is Leah Perez and originally I am from Canada. I grew up in Kingston, Ontario in Canada and uh, yeah, Belize is home to me now. Uh, my name is Alexander Perez. I am from Orange Rock District. My background is Spanish. I speak uh, English very well because here in Belize is so diverse and so mixed. <laughs> the first moment uh, I sat is beautiful area I was in a place called Manitoba, Canada. Lone white people. <laughs> I couldn't find another Hispanic around. They were very rare at the time. And this young lady was approaching me and I would just, just got uh, one of my newest, uh, first time, my uh, digital camera. And this young lady with nice black hair was walking and I, 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 couldn't, I couldn't resist. <laughs> so it is the first day of college for me and I just spent like forever getting ready to step out to adulthood and I'm coming out of the woman's dorm and I'm just like on the way to the building and all of a sudden this complete stranger with this little digital camera comes up to me and he's like hey can I take a picture nice and walks away he doesn't introduce himself. He doesn't ask me my name. He doesn't ask if I can have per if he can have permission to take a picture. He just takes a picture and walks away. So that is an interesting thing we have. Not many people have a picture of the first moment they met. As the years was coming to an end, I I was starting to get ready to work with children and young people and I remember the last year it kind of clicked, you know, it's like, man, this, uh, I think I love this young lady and I asked her, I asked her out and she said, no, no. <laughs> you scared me, you have a big vision to go back to your country to work with children, I'm ready for that. That's actually not true. <laughs> <laughs> the vision didn't scare me. In fact, I heard very clearly from the Lord that I needed to get outside of Canada. That I had, I had experience doing ministry even as a youth with children and youth, and I knew that's what I was going to do. But um, God told me that He needed to, that He wanted me to get outside of Canada so that I would serve somewhere outside of my comfort zone. So I'd have to rely on Him. So I knew that the vision didn't scare me. That actually was probably one of the things that attracted. You were just a weird guy. Like, he played the foreigner card really well. Like, he would do some, like, dumb college stuff and then be like, pretend like, oh, I don't understand English. Or, oh, you don't do that in Canada? <laughs> he just played the foreigner card real hard. So it took me a while to catch on, but I fell in love with the vision and yes, you. And uh, you kept me on my toes, which is hard to do. So we've been dating pretty serious, so I came with a group of friends to Belize to make sure that, yes, this is indeed the place where I wanted, where, where God was calling me and I could commit to being. Um, I remember it being hot and sticky and bugs, because it was summertime, right? We were here to help with the first summer of kids' camps, um, but the food was good. Um, the, we met 
like a variety of different people from the city to the Mennonite communities to the Spanish villages. Um, yeah, it was just a little bit of everything. Um, I almost broke up with him that summer, but it wasn't because of Belize. It's both of us are very strong leaders, but we lead in very different ways. And so I had to really consider if I was going to commit to working with you because I knew that it wasn't just going to be marriage. We'd be working together to do this. And uh, I decided it was worth it. And so then, yeah, the rest is history. And once I, like for me, when I commit to something, like you make the decision and you follow through. So Belize was part of the package of this man. So my commitment to this country was just as much as of him. And, you know, on that trip, I remember very clearly meeting a lady who was from Canada, but her husband was from Belize and she was miserable. She was miserable. She thought that they would just come to Belize for a bit and move back to Canada. And she just had everything negative to say about the country from the heat to the people to everything. And I knew, and I'm, I'm glad I met her because I knew I did not ever want to be like that. And so it really helped me put things in perspective that yes, there's going to be negative, but don't focus on that. Um, see all the good. So when her mom sent toilet paper, you know, like that it was a third world country where you can find toilet paper or toothpaste. And I'm like, no, that's not Belize. Belize feels like America in some ways or the other. You can find majority of the products that are, are from the States and from Mexico. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so for the first seven months, lived without electricity. First two year, two and a half years here, no water. And it was thick mangroves, so I remember I was like, I'm gonna do my part, I'm gonna help clear the land. And so like, I got in the machete and I was yeah. chopping mangrove until like this hand is full of blisters, then I changed hands, then this one is full of blisters, and I'm like, done. That's, That's it, I've <laughs> done my part. I didn't quite know what to expect and again I wasn't really moving to the country I was moving with my husband so the the motivation was a little bit different than just relocating um, but yeah it's it's been different it's but it's been good mm-hmm. no regrets no regrets it's beautiful and we're so close to the sea but you're also so close to the mountains and you're so close to to everything and it's got a little bit of everything. I I love how beautiful it is. I love the food and again with the mix of culture and everything is so much more natural. A lot of the things are made here in Belize and so it's just everything seems more fresh. Um, I love how everything's close like to drive to the different places in the country. We do a lot of visiting for for the work we do um, and and everything's not too far away. Um, Yeah. Beautiful uh that has been helpful is having Mexico to the border of us where you jump the border in Chetumal it's North America like it's Walmart mall cinema everything that uh, the US have it's right across you just have to jump once you jump in Belize there's no Burger Kings there's no Walmart it's they don't miss it yeah it's Belize itself we don't need those things here it's just the, that piece of world that we need to treasure and keep uh, that is that is makes Belize such a unique place. Mm-hmm. And one of the things that I always notice when I go back and visit family in Canada is how simple Belize is. There, and it's getting more now, but like I used to explain to my family, like I would go into culture shock when I go to Canada and go down like the peanut butter aisle for peanut butter, right? In Belize, there's the peanut butter that tastes good and there's the peanut butter you can afford. So depending on what, how much money you have at the time, you can get the one that tastes good or the one you can afford. Um, and it's just a lot simpler that way. for me is you know knowing where Leah came from came from a very beautiful city Kingston Ontario it's one of the most beautiful cities in Canada to come to a place like Belize that is very 
very different uh, for me was the provision part of it, uh, especially going to serve my country, not with government, not with a specific church, just out of my heart to, to serve and finding that balance to sustain, right? To make sure that as a Canadian that she has the little things that she would keep her going. I think that was one of the biggest challenges for me that I was like, and protecting my beautiful wife in Belize being very macho. <laughs> Just wanted to, to do that for her. One of the challenges for me was for the first time being the minority. Um, even now in our church, love our church, the only white girl, <laughs> which isn't bad. It's just different. You relate to people differently. Um, I still have difficulty understanding the Creole, which is difficult in the city because that's the main language spoken. Um, I know people will try to speak proper English and, and that helps. But you know, when you're trying to make friends and what's not, humor, especially in this culture, humor is a big thing. And so if you don't catch all the jokes, then it's sometimes hard to connect. And so I think that's what been one of the biggest challenges. So again, I'm getting better in my Creole and sometimes it'll come out and then, you know, they like you get a little bit laughed at because you're like, ah, oh, you're speaking Creole, that looks so funny. Um, which again, in my Canadian culture, like, or at least in our family, we're maybe a little more seriously. Maybe Alex likes to say we're, uh, or I'm a little bit sensitive. And so like the joking here is like, oh man, did she like put on weight? And like, be like, yes, I went to the States and look how big I came back. Oh, oh goodness, please don't do that to me. Like <laughs> my Canadian culture, you would never point out how much weight somebody put on. Um, so just some of the cultural differences and then trying to make friends. Um, that's probably been one of the bigger challenges. Um, part of, of being the minority, I do not like to go to the market. I always feel like in the Belizean market, I'm always taken advantage of. And I don't know if Alex always believes me, but I swear the prices are higher for me than they are. And I think, you know, we've had other visitors come and go to the market themselves and they've attested to that. So I'm not crazy. Um, but yeah, so I think that's been the hardest thing. And, and just being far from family. But there's, that's just the, the trade-off, right? The easiest way to understand how our ministry works is to think of it kind of like a youth camp where the morning activity is the children's outreach. We use the youth. So we recruit youth from across Belize. We don't bring any international teams in, except two individuals over the course of the summer. They have to commit for the entire summer as part of the leadership team, and they have to fundraise money to come and to join us. But otherwise, it's free for the youth that we recruit from across Belize. We train them. We train a group of about 12 to be part of the, the leadership team, to be peer leaders among the youth. And then the rest will come for about a week at a time. And we prepare them to help partners we have in the city that are doing children's programs throughout the entire year. So we take the youth in the morning, we go to three different locations, we split up the teams, three different locations, and they run kind of very similar to what people might know as a VBS program. So they have a chapel time with songs and stories and memory verses and icebreakers. They have a time where they connect with a, a local Belizean youth kind of as a mentor and they talk about what they learned. And for us, that's key is for these kids, especially from the city, to see other young people who are following the Lord and are living good examples of lives. And they'll have games, they'll do swimming, we'll have a guest speaker, sometimes we'll, we'll do special events and what's not with them. And then they, they, they do that every day for a week and we do that with 13 different partners in the city over the course of the summer. We're local nonprofit, so we also spend time fundraising that way and uh, preparing our own curriculum for the next summer. It's very important to us that what we're teaching the kids is not only just from the Word of God, but represents the culture and the country. Uh, one of the other things is the internship where we have young people commit for a whole year and they don't get paid, they volunteer. And that in that year, they get to do a little bit of everything. Uh, we plug them where their gifts are. So if they're passionate for media or they're passionate for children, our young people are building, we're gonna use 
where they're passionate and help but we, them. We also put them in places they have an experience to try to discover some new gifts as well. Yes. So our vision is to see Belize change Belize. Our heart is for the children and youth. And so we think it starts with the kids, but we're already seeing it, which is really exciting is you know we have these kids who are seeing examples from their own neighborhoods or other areas of the country of people of different culture that are from Belize that you know have never talked to or mixed with before who love the Lord too and so they see these examples and so as campers they come up and they're like I want to volunteer in the summertime I want to be with you and so they become um, volunteer counselors in the summer. The easiest place to go would to find BelizeCampingExperience.com and under support there's different options. If you're from the States we have a registered partner organization there that you can send funds through. If you're from Canada we have the same as well. You can send funds through there. If you're here from Belize you can give us a call or email us at BelizeCampingExperience at gmail.com and can figure it out. And you know we really think that it's not just about money especially if you're here in Belize. If you have fruit from your garden that we can share out if you have cows or chickens or sheep. or sheep if you have building materials so that we can continue to establish the place here it's going to take everybody again beliefs changing beliefs a youtube channel for us came about is that as we go out with the ministry and we're visiting different people, we're taking along our children and we're seeing such new things, experiencing different things. And that, you know, if we can record that and, and use that as a way to try to be intentional with spending time with our kids and teaching our children as we go. I never had a functioning family. I know the Lord has blessed me with one. I have two beautiful kids. Um, have Chase, Anya. And so the whole YouTubing uh, was because I, I believe Belize needs that. If you, if you feel that in your heart, that we need to shine good stories. We need to, our country needs a lot of good stories. And there's hundreds of good stories out there, but if we don't tell those good stories, then they get, uh, they get cemented by all the bad news that happens, which there's a lot of good people in our country. I have to say, Mickey has inspired me, you know, he came from abroad, he came to Belize, he saw Belize and the beauty that the Lord has blessed us with and he says, I gotta tell these stories and this man started right here in Belize shining for us and telling our stories and I think we Belizeans have to do that, Mickey is living, man, big, big service here in Belize, may God bless you wherever you go. I know he is coaching me so that I can continue the journey so that we can keep telling the good stories that God is doing. And in all of that, you can see that I love my family, I love my God, but I also love the entire country of Belize where he has placed us. If somebody's gonna follow the unbelievable Perez's, I hope what they get to see is all of the good things we get to see and experience as a family here in Belize and realize whether you're international or whether you're local Belizean here, there is lots to do together expensive and expensive there's lots to see and learn together we've learned so much about our own country and the many different people groups here it's just it's a never-ending adventure to have with the family follow the unbelievable perezes Remember kids, don't be scared, be smart. Subscribe! Subscribe.